All right, let's now learn about what an inducible enzyme is. So, um, let's say I have uh, cultured bacteria. These are the bacteria uh, samples. Definitely, they are not so big. They'll be microscopic. But uh, I have taken pet petri plates with uh, agar gel in it, and this agar gel is going to contain certain nutrients that will help the bacteria grow. Okay, let's say. Uh, one nutrient that I added to this gel was lactose. Okay, so now this medium has lactose in it. Okay, whereas this medium does not contain lactose. Okay, this is a medium having other nutrients, but lactose is absent. And this petri plate has the same bacterial culture uh, as this one and it contains lactose what will i notice is that in presence of lactose these bacteria will produce a particular type of enzyme in their cell okay i'm representing them as the light blue dots so this enzyme is actually called beta galactosidase so whenever bacteria grow in a medium containing lactose it will produce this beta galactosidase enzyme to break lactose and produce glucose for their own energy purpose to meet their own energy demand they need to break this lactose in this nutrient medium and convert it to glucose and make their own atp from those glucose okay how will they do that by producing this enzyme beta galactosidase so i am going to call this enzyme something let's wait a minute and see what this enzyme can be called now this bacterial uh, culture plate does not have lactose in it and these bacterial colonies will produce all other enzymes required but it will not produce beta galactosidase and the reason is the substrate that is a lactose is not there in the medium Okay, so this beta galactosidase enzyme is an example of an inducible enzyme. Why am I calling it an inducible enzyme? Because this lactose is my inducer. When this inducer is present in the environment, then the living organism will produce this enzyme. So this is an inducible enzyme, an enzyme which is transcribed and translated and synthesized by the living organism only when the inducer is present in its environment no inducer the enzyme will not be transcribed or sorry the enzyme will not be synthesized the enzyme is after all a protein so the basic idea over here you need to understand in the molecular level is here the gene coding for beta galactosidase is uh, getting expressed whereas here the gene is not getting expressed because the gene needs an inducer to stimulate it this inducer is not here that is the whole idea of an inducible enzyme with respect to this e explanation if i explain what um, what a repressible enzyme is So in this case again we have two bacterial culture plate. Let's say in this uh, plate I have uh, added a metabolite or any substrate. Something is added and here the substrate is not added. The metabolite or the chemical molecule is not added. And I notice that when the metabolite is added no enzyme is produced by the bacteria whereas when the metabolite is not there then the bacteria will produce the enzyme so in this case what is happening the presence of the metabolite is like an inhibitor it is not letting the genes transcribe and translate uh, and synthesize the, this enzyme protein whereas in the absence of the metabolite the gene is switched on and it is getting transcribed, translated and the mRNA is helping in production of the polypeptides which will later become this enzyme after arrangement and uh, folding. Okay, So this type of enzyme is called a repressible 
एंजाइम ओके रिप्रेसिबल एंजाइम एंड इंड्यूसिबल एंजाइम दिस इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द बोथ थैंक यू